We come to worship our God, to listen to the one who calls us here. We come trusting God to lead us in the coming days, as surely as were our grandparents in the faith. We come to worship our God, to shout with joy to the God of all people. We come to the Creator of all things, to be bathed in the waters of life. We come to the feast of God's faithful, to be fed by the one who never forsakes us. We come to worship our God, to sing aloud to the one who saves us. Amen. Welcome to this podcast uh, from the Potchefstroom Methodist Church. I, my name is Charles Skin and I'm a retired minister who uh, was privileged to minister at the Potchefstroom Methodist Church for 24 years. We ask that you just sit back, relax and enjoy the service of worship and we invite you to participate as well this morning. Our reading comes from Hebrews chapter 13 verses 7 to 9 and also verses 15 to 16. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 7 to 9 and then also verses 15 to 16. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teach teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, by grace, not by eating ceremonial foods, which is of no benefit to those who do so. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you as the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. Your yearning to shower blessings on your people has not changed. As you delivered the people of old from slavery in Egypt, so you deliver us from whatever enslaves us through the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. He endured death so that he could nourish us with the sweetest gift of all, his life. Accept our praise and adoration, we pray, for we offer them in Jesus' name and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, Despite all the ways we speak of sin, failures, mistakes, intended acts, Scripture tells us that we are stubborn-hearted, wanting only our own way. But if we pause to listen to God, if we open our mouths and our hearts to confess our sin, you, O God, will fill our emptiness with forgiveness and with hope. And so, Lord, we are always uncomfortable watching God when you notice how we want to sit in the seats of honor. We can be so proper, so good, so well off, that it is easy to imagine we are superior to the poor. We are so busy completing our to-do list each day that we forget to do good when we have the chance. Forgive us, welcoming God. Fill our emptiness with your grace and humility, that we would spend our lives alongside Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, throwing a party for the poor, the damaged, the prisoner, the lost, the oppressed. Let us be silent for a moment as we make our own confession. Listen to the assurance of pardon. This is the good news. After what God has done for us, what can anyone or anything do to us? We are new people, graced by our loving God, forgiven, embraced, welcomed by our God. We will offer our open heart, we will offer open hearts and serving hands to everyone we meet. God in community, holy in one. 
yesterday, today, tomorrow, always. We will pray as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Sing with, if you know that beautiful hymn, Now thank we all our God. Yesterday, today and forever. I don't know if you remember Bob Dylan's famous song, The Times They Are a Changing. This, the title song for Dylan's third studio album, was released in January of 1964. Some of you may remember that, that the decade of the 60s was a time of tremendous social upheaval here and all over the world, and indeed in South Africa as well. And there was this thing called the generation gap. I mean, my family and my mom thought Bob Dylan's song was awful. I think it was great. Come, mothers and fathers throughout the land, and don't criticize what you can't understand. Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly again aging. Please get out of the new get out of the new one if you can't lend a hand. For the times, they are a-changing. I think Dylan's song was an expression of hope. For older people, of course, it was cause for despair. The familiar world in which they had grown up was crumbling around them. Kids were burning bras. Music was changing from the big band sound that my mom and our families loved to protest music and then rock and roll. Psychedelic drugs, long hair, free love, disrespect for authority... These were things older people couldn't get their minds around. I mean, they were so square. But as Mark Twain once said about his father, When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished by how much he'd learned in seven years. You know, they say that as we age, we become our parents. Hmm. And I think many of us have become our parents in many ways. I mean, these kids today, with their loud, tuneless music, tattoos, body piercings, pink hair, jeans below the hips, noses constantly stuck in video games or texting on their cell phones. Oh, the times they are changing. And now I don't like it so much either. Change is inevitable, and it is always uncomfortable. But the kind of change taking place in our world today is monumental change, paradigm change, cultural change, artificial intelligence change. And it is more than just a generational divide. In the midst of the pandemic, we are experiencing big change, an economic recession. Up to 35% of our fellow citizens are without jobs and have very few immediate prospects for a new one. Many have lost homes and even more don't have homes. People are worried about the stability and integrity of the retirement funds, worried about ESKIM. Young parents wrestle with whether they can trust their children to government schools. 
Global warming and oil spills threaten our quality of life. I mean, did you ever imagine in the world of yesterday that you would one day buy water in a bottle and pay to watch TV or wear a mask all day long and sanitize your hands every time you move? The times, they are a-changing. Nuclear weapons abound. China has emerged as an economic and military superpower. Zimbabwe, which was the breadbasket of Africa, has no food. South Africa seems to be run by a corrupt government. The times, they are a-changing. It's an uncomfortable time in our world today. Things are changing all around us. Look at what has happened in the last year with this pandemic. And people are looking for something unchanging that they can anchor their lives to more so than ever. Something solid and dependable enough to help them, nav them navigate their way through these tsunami-like waves of change. The early Christians experienced the same kind of anxiety about the changing world in which they found themselves. As Christianity spread throughout the Gentile world, the church found itself face to face with people who did not share the same values and understandings of its Jewish heritage. It was a world without the Ten Commandments at its center. It was a world of diverse religious views and philosophies. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, indeed the God of Jesus, was but one of many gods competing for the devotion of the people. In many respects, the world of the early church looked a lot like the world today. The times were a-changing. And like today, people back then tried to find some solid ground upon which to stand as the flood waters of change swept over them. Some thought they should go back to the Bible. The people to whom the letter to the Hebrews was written were being told by some that the way forward was to go back, back to the Torah, back to the basics, back to the fundamentals of their faith. And this is perhaps the most common way people try to cope with change. We see it in our society today as many of us try to deal with the new paradigms all around by calling for a return to the South Africa we once knew. Bring back the prayer into schools. Teach children the Ten Commandments. Use the Bible as our guide for determining how to respond to modern social controversies like same-sex marriage, abortion and divorce. Some people believe that the best way forward is to go back. Others among the early Christians, also, like many of us today, believed that the best way to deal with the waves of change was to hop onto a surfboard and ride the wave into the future. Some of the early Christians were fascinated by every new idea that came down the road. They dealt with change by adapting to it, modernizing their faith to fit the modern landscape. So, in the early times of the church, Books like the Gospel of Thomas were written, incorporating into the Christian faith principles of Gnosticism, which was all the rage in those days. In our day, we see a lot of sermons and books that are little more than the religious packaging of pop psychology and self-help techniques. And we can readily see the attempt to keep up with the times as Christians build auditoriums instead of sanctuaries, and worship services take on the look and feel of a rock concert. Some believe that the best way to deal with change is to dive into it and go with the flow. What do you think is the best way forward through changing times? In dealing with this very question, the writer of the epistle to the Hebrews offered an alternative to either trying to recreate the past or dive headfirst into the future. Here's what he said is the solid ground upon which we can stand 
and build our lives. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, I love it when people come along and ask what I believe as a Methodist minister. I say, I believe in Jesus. They usually say, yes, but what do you believe in? What they're looking for, of course, is a confession of faith in some theological system. They want to hear what I believe about the Bible, or that I believe in the Trinity, or I believe in pre-millennial, mid-tribulational, dispensational eschatology. Hell, that's a mouthful. But the truth is that I believe in Jesus. And Jesus is the lens through which I come to understand the Bible and theology and the world around us. You see, these things constantly change. Our understanding of the Bible changes. None of us take our stubborn children out to the elders by the gates of the city to have them stoned to death anymore, as much as we would like to at times. Because we read the Bible through the lens of Jesus. We know that atrocities committed against innocent people can never be justified, even though there are stories in the Bible that try to make genocide the will of God. Jesus would never sanction the burning of the Holy Quran. The religious world has an ever-changing landscape. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that means that while the world changes around us, Jesus gives us some solid ground upon which to anchor our lives. For instance, we can hold on to the unchanging love of God for our world. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but the language of the world today seems to have been taken over by hate speech. People detest each other and say so. The political rhetoric of our day consists of all the reasons why the other guy, the other religion, the other group, the other party is a bad person. We love to blame. We are immersed in a culture today that teaches us to think the worst of others. But Jesus did not live that way, nor did he speak that way. Jesus taught his disciples to see the best in others and how to bring it out in them. In fact, Jesus taught us to consider others as better than ourselves and to be merciful and gracious toward them. Because Jesus knew the power of love, he was able to cross over religious boundaries, cultural boundaries, ethnic boundaries, and all the barriers that divide people one from another. Jesus took all religious law and summarized it in one two-part commandment. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the only way the world can be made right. So in a world that is always pulling us lower, we can look higher to Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And along with the unchangeable call to love God and neighbor, comes the unchangeable call to personal responsibility. Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of people. You see, Jesus put it on us to live out the gospel of hope. It is not something others can do for us. We bear the burden of reconciling the world to God and to each other. We are, as the Bible puts it, ambassadors of reconciliation. And that's an amazing concept when you consider that the world around us tries everything it can to divide people into winners and losers, the righteous 
and unrighteous. The very meaning of the cross is that an innocent man gave his life for the guilty. For you and me to take up the cross and follow Jesus means to lay down our lives for people who don't deserve it, for those on the other side of the divide, even for those who are our enemies. Now, that does not usually require being crucified on their behalf, but it does mean sacrifice on our part. We pour our lives, we give of our time, talent and treasure to reach into the needs of others. In the face of a changing world, the unchanging call is to take up your cross and come and follow me. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And this is as true as change and transition takes place in our personal lives too. We know that in life there is birth, life, death. We are all on a journey of change. Sometimes these changes are welcome, but often they frighten us. Getting old is not for sissies. Facing death is always unsettling. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. I will not leave you desolate, said the Lord. I will send the Holy Spirit to guide you and be with you forever. In my Father's house are many rooms, and I am going to prepare a place for you, so that when the time comes for you to check out from Hotel Earth, we can be together. At just the right time, I'll come, and we'll walk into the future together. Don't be afraid. I will keep my word to you. The promise of Jesus is that as life unfolds, as changes come, as the world around us evolves into new and strange shapes, in the midst of the pandemic, He will keep us safe and send the Spirit to strengthen and guide and will never abandon us. Our future is not up for grabs. Our future is in His hands. So as this tumultuous new week begins and the waves of change swell all around, center your life on Jesus. As Bob Dylan sang, the times, they are a-changing. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. Hear the benediction as we go. It's time to go, time to re-engage with the world, time to put the faith into deeds, time to practice uncalculating love, time to meet the Christ who waits for you, time to share his boundless hope. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, with the blessing of God in your mind and heart. Let each morning be a joy to you, each path be a joy to you, each neighbor be a joy to you, now and always. Amen. We play out to that lo lovely hymn, Oh, how sweet the glorious message, simple faith may claim, yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same, is the same. Still he loves to save the sinful, heal the sick and lame, cheer the mourner, still the tempest, glory to his name, yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same, all may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, all may change, but Jesus never, glory to his name. Amen.